Yo, it's Austin. Do you ever feel like you missed out on a supposed fun train ride, say, one that left the station 13 years ago? Well, that's me with the Ryu Gagotoku franchise, or as it's known here in the West, as Yakuza. It wouldn't be right to speak of Yakuza without bringing up the legacy of Shinmu, the classic adventure mystery beat-em-up that exists as a staple in the Dreamcast library. The ambition of Shinmu 1 and 2 was nearly unmatched at its release, culminating in being, at the time, one of the most expensive video games ever developed, but it showed. It was rare for a game to be almost entirely voice acted, but Shinmu did it, and hell, even pulled non-gamers in like my mother into watching me play it. To this day, she still asks if I found the sailors, meaning it definitely left a strong impression in all of its forklifting glory. Are those people sailors? 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 Now, I'm not gonna say that Shinmu bombed, but it sure didn't do the gangbusters that Sega was probably hoping for. The Dreamcast version of the sequel was canned in the States and pushed to the Xbox. The story was left wide open and abandoned until the recent Kickstarter for Shinmu 3. Hell, Ryo was relegated to cameo status and other Sega crossover games until they finally announced the Shinmu 1 and 2 HD collection. But this isn't about Shinmu, this is about the Yakuza franchise. Someone's gonna get mad at this, but I see Yakuza as somewhat of a spiritual successor to Shinmu, and not just in one regard. Not only do you have similar gameplay elements being explored, such as beat em up, punching, and city exploration, but you even have some developers crossing over between both projects. Most notably, the lead director Toshihiro Nagaoshi, who was part of research and development on Shinmu. But if only the original game had been marketed better. I think it was a sign of the times, but people were calling Yakuza a subpar GTA clone back in the day, and any review I would read or watch was indicative of that. All I really knew was that it had Mark Hamill and a lot of cursing. Like, a lot. You think I'm a fucking idiot? Look at you, fuckhead! Shut the fuck up! Being a Yakuza cherry boy, though, I think it's time to find out what this is really about. So let us step into the shoes of Kazuma Kiryu as we step into the metropolitan streets of Japan in 2005 with Yakuza. Crime drama is not a new thing. However, Japanese Yakuza drama is something that, at least in the States, isn't really common. The Yakuza has almost always been shown exclusively as villainous in American media, like that time Aragorn infiltrated their ranks. But getting to see a strictly Japanese Yakuza story feels rare. But I get it, because this game's like, super complex. Crime dramas usually present us with a ton of different families, all essentially trying to run the city, and Yakuza is no different. Hell, it might be even more complex to jump into due to how everything is presented in this game, but I'm gonna try my best. You control Kazuma Kiryu, a well-respected member of the Dojima clan located in the fictional city of Kamurocho. Kiryu has quite the tough exterior, but a heart of gold. He's a freaking good boy, despite the fact that he's very, very quick to beat the ever-living shit out of somebody. But it's brought to light early on that Kiryu isn't really fond of the way things are run. You could spend an entire video talking about the inner politics of the different clans, who runs what, where money is going, and why people want to fight, but I'll spare you. The important thing to know is that Kiryu is not here by choice. He and childhood friends Akira Nishikiyama and Yumi Sawamura were all orphans together who were raised by one Shintaro Kazama, the captain of the Dojima family. You still with me? Okay, okay, well Nishikiyama and Kiryu were essentially born into the Yakuza, Kiryu wants to make a change to things, but then the leader of the Dojima clan does some really fucked up shit to Yumi and then... Book murder. Being the freaking good boy that he is, Kiryu takes the fall for Nishiki murdering Sohei Dojima, spends an entire decade in prison, and then is let out into the real world once again. From here, he meets a mysterious girl named Haruka who is looking for her parents. She's pretty okay. Not long in, a bunch of people die and there's gunshots and then you find out that Nishiki turned heel big time and it's up to Kiryu to solve the mysteries. Kind of like in Shinmu, but way darker. And there's blood, like, like a lot of blood. It's a solid and classic start to any crime drama story, but it's just too bad that the gameplay is pretty weak. Now the Yakuza franchise would become more solid over the years, but for the original PlayStation 2 release, it's uh, pretty fucking janky, especially considering it released stateside in 2006 after, you know, Devil May Cry 3. Now, I'm fully aware that with the future games in the franchise, combat would become more and more refined, but the original Ryu Gagotoku sure is 
a little lacking. Whenever you're not exploring the map, running into shops, or sitting through dramatic cutscenes, you're being accosted by just about everyone on the streets. Like, it's surprising how many people want to fight Kiryu all the time, but I'll take it. You're walking around and suddenly a group of dudes will be like, <clears throat> Hey, bitch motherfucker, you look like you're ugly. Let us fight. And you'll load into combat. Here, you basically will do combos based on variations of pressing square for light attacks and triangle for heavy finishers. Kiryu can also throw dudes around and do bigger finishers using his heat meter, which will grow based on your combat actions. Punch dudes and taunt them in order to punch dudes more and then slam their heads against the wall. You can pick up objects strewn about the map, some of which your enemies will carry. These tend to break really quickly, but they can also be used for some devastating heat actions in order to do uh, things like this. This is kind of a visual spectacular, as seeing these play out in real time in the midst of combat is satisfying as hell, especially on the PlayStation 2. However, I wish combat played out as simply as I just wrote. The lock-on and dodging functions hardly work. You'll be supposedly targeting a dude and attempt your attack, but instead do a full combo in an entirely different direction. While this isn't so bad, it kinda sucks when you're fighting a bunch of dudes at the same time and you end up getting the ever-living shit kicked out of you because of it. It also doesn't help that against bosses, many times you'll be faced with what is essentially block spill. I can tell the game wants you to play more methodically, one would say, like a dragon, but it's hard to break through bosses when they block constantly. Other times you can pull the same square four times and then triangle combo and completely cheese down bosses though, so I guess we're fucking winging it. Something to get used to in Yakuza that is relatively different from other beat em up style games is carrying around food and drinks. This is gonna be your main way to restore HP with food also being used to increase your XP. XP is used to power up each of your three stats, unlocking new combos and abilities to get better in fights. It's a pretty simple system, one that would be heavily expanded upon in later games. Alongside combat, we've got a couple mini games, namely different types of gambling mini games and a batting cage. You can also spend times at the hostess club chatting up kawaii girls for mo romance or play with a ufo catcher and that's about it at least in yakuza 1 these pretty much only exist to get you money and items or progress sub stories sub stories are side quests that you can do in between the major chapter events these are okay while a lot of these serve as time wasters, a few side quests open up with interesting narratives, but nothing really deep enough to leave a big impact on the story or cure you the character. Well, besides the one mission where you take a sick kid to a supposedly wacko doctor who ends up being something a little more. The main thing making Yakuza kind of special is the story, but it's just too unfortunate that the translation and script is, frankly, bad. How many times I gotta tell you, I'm not Yakuza. You retarded or just... Def. Fuck you! Yakuza came out in 2006, a year when movies like Sin City, Kill Bill, The Departed were all the rage. Games like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas with its heavy language were on top of the charts. So when I boot up Yakuza and I'm greeted with STUPID! Fucking! It's pretty easy to just shake my head at it. But beyond that, there's a bit of dissonance between the story and the way it was translated. So you turn on the game and the very first line of spoken dialogue is Shinji here, referring to Kiryu as Aniki, which is Japanese for big brother. Aniki. There's a line of respect here in regards to the original Japanese script, but when you count the amount of vulgarity thrown in for the American audience, it's freaking weird. Never mind the script though, when you've got a dub that is just as painful. This blows my mind because you've got some big name talent here, namely Michael Madsen as the villainous Futoshi Shimano and the ever talented Mark Hamill as Goro Majima. Majima is a very interesting and complex character who seems to have quite the affinity for Kiryu. Hamill's portrayal of him is psychotic and honestly, he's the best in the entire dub. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part where you're supposed to laugh! Laugh, you stupid motherfucker! The problem is when you take a look at our main boy Kiryu, voiced by some guy named Daryl, who can't seem to convey any intense emotion without sounding like he's trying to keep it down for the neighbors. Then step the fuck up. It's time to die. All in all, it seems like Yakuza 1 is kinda worth skipping. However, not too long ago, a remake of Yakuza came out called Yakuza Kiwami, and it is one hell of a remake. It's got, like, revamped story elements, revamped gameplay, and it links it to Yakuza 0. They did good.
on the heels of Yakuza 0, Sega decided to revamp the original and buff it up as a replacement. But before we dive into anything, let us check a script comparison. Midway through the game, Kiryu meets the daughter of Date-san, the detective that dealt with his initial imprisonment. You find out he's a bad dad and have a run-in with his daughter on the streets attempting to sell herself when Kiryu confronts her. Here's the Kiwami version. The Date-san was and here's the PS2 one. So, does your father know what you're doing? What? Of course not! Are you fucking retarded? <laughs> yeah. The script is fixed. For this video, I played through both of the games, but hands down, I would recommend Kiwami over the original on this alone. But Kiwami also does a hell of a lot of other stuff too. Beyond scripting, we've also got a handful of additional cutscenes further detailing the fall of Nishiki. The original PS2 game pretty much made him a villain and left a lot open to interpretation. Kiwami, on the other hand, shows his descent over the 10 year period that Kiryu's in prison and it adds so much. But more importantly, we've got better combat and more mini-games! Kiryu now has four styles of combat, one of which we'll tackle later. These are basically imported from Yakuza 0, but we've got Brawler, which is a balanced and unrefined version of Kiryu punching things, Rush, which is a really fast-paced, let us dash all over the place kind of thing, Beast, which I mean, is basically what it sounds like. You can pick up objects mid-combo and just wreck dudes at the cost of your speed. And then finally, Dragon, which is a fighting style improved over time. XP is poured into one of three different trees similar to the original, but with a more upgrade-specific tree as opposed to the PlayStation 2's general level feel. All in all, combat is a much, much refined version of what the series started with, and that's perfectly fine. Rather than an isometric view, exploring the city is done more freely with a movable camera behind the back. The city of Kamurocho really breathes with life, and the accompanying mini-games and NPC interactions really flesh that out. Beyond just running into people on the street like a rude dickhead, Kiwami is pumped full with minigames. You've got all of the games from the original revamped, as well as <gasps> bowling billiards and darts, shogi, karaoke, mahjong, photo booths, pocket circuit racer from zero, and Masu King, battle bug beauties where half naked girls dressed up like bugs fight each other. <laughs> This is Yakuza. Starting the Yakuza franchise and hopping this many games into the future has really shown me how the series has evolved with time. Not even just from a gameplay perspective, but the presentation of everything. Even though it's not perfect, with certain sub-stories lacking in high quality motion capture leading to some static looking faces, it sure as hell beats that PS2 face. We've got even more sub-stories, some of which go into far more depth. Also, the badass dad's quest, which is a fucking masterpiece. But most importantly, Yakuza Kiwami gives us more Majima. While we may no longer have Mark Hamill as Majima, I've got to say that the Japanese voiceovers are great. Majima's a fucking weird dude, and among other improvements and additions, Kiwami adds the Majima Everywhere system, which is exactly what it sounds like. Goro Majima has a bit of an obsession with Kiryu, especially after finding him freshly released from prison. So no matter where you are, there's a chance you'll hear that dreaded Kiryu-chan and have to prepare for a tough fight. This is also the main way you relearn Kiryu's signature dragon style of fighting. After all, he was in prison for 10 years and kind of forgot how to fight, so seeing it all be this cohesive system that adds to character development is pretty refreshing. While sometimes you might end up in a situation where facing Majima is the last thing you'd want to do, it's always fun to see him pop out of sewer drains or hell, become a zombie? This game's weird, but I love it. So all in all, the original Yakuza on the PlayStation 2 is kind of just kind of just okay. We would see better efforts from Sega like not even a year later, but if you really really want to play the original Yakuza, which I do recommend as a starting point, I think you should play Kiwami. It's just the better game. No matter which version of Ryu Gagotoku you're playing, the story remains essentially the same. Boy, oh, does it hit some tough notes. Kiryu's tale covers sexual assault, prostitution, torture, extortion, betrayal, the works. And this is just the first game. The additional cutscenes edited with Nishiki's backstory make him quite the sympathetic villain. I'd imagine more so if I'd played Zero at this point, but watching his descent from a misguided boy to a stone-cold murderer hell-bent on taking over the Dojima clan is fantastic. 
Emotional moments starring Kiryu as the sinner were kind of a drab in the PlayStation 2 game, but witnessing his reactions in Kiwami made me really believe in this character. <laughs> well, I mean, at least from a story perspective. Yakuza does this weird thing where it'll have amazingly heavy soap opera cutscenes, followed by smacking dudes with sofas and racing RC cars in the most dramatic of manners. When you look at Yakuza in the most boiled down manner, it's a love story, a revenge story, a tale of family. The father-daughter dynamic between Haruka and Kiryu is genuinely touching, and knowing that time progresses between each game makes me excited to see where everything goes. I'm so glad that Sega didn't abandon this franchise in the West. While from everything I've heard, 3 and 5 and numerous spin-offs have had pages and pages of issues with localization, this janky, rough start is one hell of an introduction to characters that I've already fallen for. Both games are far from perfect, with Kiwami suffering from frame rate issues and weird PlayStation 2 era pacing issues but it's hard for me to complain when I see the bigger picture in front of me. In fact, the biggest complaint I have with Kiwami is the fact that in the shooting mission, Date's revolver has 15 bullets. But like, it's a revolver though. I'm just glad that Sega got an opportunity to retcon that amazing script. Maybe now if I can say goodbye to my ulcer. Well, that's it for Yakuza and Yakuza Kiwami. I really like this franchise. I'm really excited to see where it goes. And I'm going to cover all of the games in the franchise, I think. But maybe not too soon, because I don't want to get burnt out. However, this year you can probably expect something on Yakuza 0 and Yakuza 2, provided I don't die. To the Yakuza. Hey, thanks for watching. Special shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys know the deal, y'all the best. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, or maybe, hey, if you want to send me things at my PO box, it's right there on the screen. If you want me to open it on a stream, hey, just let me know. Also, while you're here, why don't you check out another video of mine, or follow me on Twitter, or do all the other things that you're supposed to do, because YouTube is a big bully. Smack that bell. Smack that big bell right in the fucking fret.